a lesson on how to overcome inferiority. I think this is the fifth series that we will entitle this this portion on how to deal with rejection. Is that all right? We are using the life of Gideon. Does we allow the house to be in order? Does the word go forth? We are using the life of Gideon. How that God encouraged him beyond himself to make a stand. And God delivered him from inferiority. He taught him how to fresh past his fear. We found out that obedience is a key to deliverance. We also saw that in order for you to do and to be, you must first believe that God is, and you must have confidence that he's able to use you in that capacity or whatever it is you're trying to do. In other words, Gideon learned that not only did he have to believe that God was able, but he had to also believe in himself. He had to believe that he was who God said he was. And God convinced him that he had the faith and the strength to go forward. And he, I pray, is convincing some of you. Amen. That you no longer have to walk with your head bowed down low. You no longer have to uh, give in to the spirit of inferiority and low self-esteem. If you just follow the word of God and follow the life of Gideon, it'll lead you right out of it. And so now... Gideon, our last lesson was on having a for sure confirmation. God built Gideon's faith up to the fact that he, to the point that he knew that God was with him and that he would be the one. And so he went forth to battle. We also found out that once you were delivered and you're no longer being bogged down by spirits of oppression and fear or the low self-esteem, your speech changes. You no longer talk the way you used to talk. Now you talk with confidence. You talk with surety because now you have learned to believe in God and then to believe in yourself, that God is able to help you. And we realize that there will be folks who would not like your change. Amen. They would try to cause you to go back to the way you were. Even though they knew the way you were, you were miserable. You were weak. You were vulnerable. But some people don't mind seeing you in that state. Uh, some because of envy, some because they feel this to their advantage to try to take advantage of you. But in the life of Gideon, we found that that was the way to withstand that and to keep pushing. Pushing past your fears. And though you may feel afraid on the inside, you keep fighting on the outside until that fear leaves. So now Gideon has went forth with 300 men. We also talked about in the previous lessons how Gideon went forth to battle with 30,000 men, and God said, you've got too many people. So he had to downsize his army. And what did God do? God told him to discern and analyze the people around him. When you're trying to change your way of being and trying to walk with a new walk, you also have to discern the company you keep. You have to be sure that you're not surrounded by those of negative influence. You have to be sure that your circle of influence is that of a positive matter, that which is in tune with God and with what God wants you to do and be. A man Gideon lost out of 30 men, he ended up with 300. Because the crowd is around, don't mean the crowd gives you strength. See, a lot of things hide in the crowd. But when you break that crowd down, I feel the virtue, you begin to see exactly what you're dealing with. And so Gideon understood that in order for him a man to go forth and to lose his self-esteem and, and to lose that uh, inferiority complex. Sometimes you have to change your company. You have to change the people you walk around and hang around. Amen? Because uh, many of the people had fear. Many of the people's minds were not on deliverance. And even the scripture says, if you walk with the quarrelsome man, you'll become quarrelsome. If you hang around people full of doubt, then that doubt could spread onto you. So you need to surround yourself with people that are headed in that same direction. Amen. That understand the change that is taking place in your life. Now, Gideon chapter 8. <clears throat> Gideon is fighting the battle. He's encouraged now. 
And he's going forth with his 300 men. He's overcome his inferiority complex. But as he travels in his journey, even after his deliverance and his change of mind, he still finds opposition that's coming this way. Once you become strengthened, once you become assured of yourself and you have confidence that God is with you and that you're walking in the right direction, you can rejoice in that, but by no means should you think that your trials and testings are over. Because now that you come through, you're going to be trying to see how solid you really are. And even in your victory, the devil will send certain situations, and God will allow certain situations to come your way to try your heart and your faith to see if you are steadfast. And Gideon is finding this out. He's already began the battle. And he's with him. He called all the brothers together, and he, the children of Israel, and he sent them out to battle. And they were moving because of him. He was an impotence. He was on fire for God. And in verse 8, chapter 1, book of Judges, read. And he went up thence to Gideon, and said, Behold, the Lord is with us. Chapter 8, verse 1, book of Judges. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, why hast thou served us thus, that thou callest us not, when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites? And they did chide with him sharply. And he said unto them, What have I done now in comparison of you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Ebenezer? God hath delivered unto your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb. And what was I able to do in comparison of you? Then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that. Now Gideon's on fire now. He's no longer hiding. He's no longer walking in fear. He has went forth and the enemy is on the run. But the brethren, the men of Ephraim, he called them out to the battle and told them, listen, take your men and go over there and you'll overcome the enemy. And they did. And they reaped a great reward. But if Gideon continued to fight, they came to Gideon. And they said, why, why didn't you call us as you continue to fight the battle? Gideon said, wait a minute. Didn't you just get a victory? I sent you somewhere and you received a victory over the enemy. The victory that you won is greater than what I'm doing now. And as Gideon began to talk, they understood he made sense. Now, he's overcoming his inferiority. He's walking in his strength. But he's finding out that you can't please everybody all the time. He's also finding out that sometimes people are blind to the good that you do. And they're blind to the blessings that they have. So Gideon had to not be discouraged. Now, they had to call him at the beginning of his lesson. He had been all shaken. But he didn't let them uh, cause him to become bitter. He had just sent them in a pathway that would bless them. And here they, they forgot that quick, and they're accusing him of leaving them out. But he was not moved. Because, you see, he'd overcome his inferiority. He did not allow them to cause him to feel as though he was being unfair because he knew where he stood. He had confidence, you understand? And so, and so he told them and caused them to open their eyes, and he rejected that negative feeling of being uh, unfair. He didn't receive it because he knew who he was now. You see, so when you're walking and you're walking in deliverance and you say you no longer will bow down to the beggar, beggarly elements of this world, inferiority, low self-esteem, and you, you strive and you stand and you begin to do good things for people in the name of the Lord, and these same people come around and they blame you for overlooking them. Before, you might have felt all down, what did I do wrong? But now you don't feel that way because you know you were sure in your heart. He spoke up. Sometimes we just stand still and speak up. Maybe somebody's eyes will be opened. But you can't be double-minded. You can't allow people to move you off of what you know is right. And the Holy Ghost told me to tell you, above all, you cannot allow people to tell you that you are wrong in what you know you're doing in the right way. Amen. How are you going to tell me that what I'm doing and what God has given me to do is wrong when he's given it to me. How can someone else tell you unless God spoke to him? But if you know that you are sure walking in the right path, then you have to know this. Because somebody will come with a sincere heart in the name of the Lord, but God didn't send them. And you will be turned off your course because you were not sure within yourself. 
Gideon learned to be sure. You put down that low self-esteem and you have confidence in your choices, in your stand. For sure confirmation. Know what God has told you. Know the things you have overcome. Know, amen, the changes that have taken place in your life. And it's good that you know this because, see, people will always come and try to get you to remember the trash. Remember how you used to be. Oh, you're excited about the change. You're excited about, man, I'm going to fight for God. And all of a sudden, somebody will come, well, I remember when you used to. Or you, I'm on a virtue. You're trying to relate. You're trying to talk. And you're, you're feeling pretty good about yourself because normally you don't open up, but you're opening it up now. And, and But it seems like your, your words are not getting anywhere because the people you're talking to, instead of dealing with the issue of the hand, they always say, well, I know you always do this and say that. Well, once you learn to make a stand, these things don't bother you anymore. Because now you know what you know. And you're not moved. So Gideon learned to know his actions. And as he moved with integrity of his own heart, he learned not to let other people cause him to doubt his decisions and his choices. And he allowed not the complaints of others to confuse his mind. He learned not to be moved by emotions. These men were upset. Listen, they were sincere. Why did you leave them out? But he never left them out. They just forgot. They were speaking by their own emotions. When people come to you judging you by their own emotions, stand still and stand your ground. Because the emotions feel real, don't make them right. Know what you know. And Gideon stood his ground. And then they let him alone when he broke it down to them. Read. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him, faint, yet pursuing them. And he said to the men of Sukkot, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that follow me. For they be faint, and I am pursuing after Ziba and Zelunah kings of Media. And the princes of Sukkot said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zamuna now in thy hand, that we should give bread unto thine army? And Gideon said, Therefore the Lord hath delivered Zeba and Zamuna into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. And he went up thence to Peniel, and spake unto them likewise. And the men in Peniel answered him as the men of Sukkot and answered him. And he spake also unto the men of Peniel, saying, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Gideon's on the move. He's pursuing the enemy that's left. And he goes through this certain town, and he says, listen, we are tired. We're, we're hungry. We've, we've been fighting all day. Listen, give them. Give my man and me some food and some bread that we may eat and continue on our journey. And these men said, oh, do you already have these kings in your hand? Have you already overcome? You want us to feed you as though you've already been victorious. They said, we're not giving you anything. Gideon said, when I come back from the battle, then I'm going to take care of you. Went to the next city. And they said the same thing. Who are you? You already devoured these kings. You want us to feed you as though you are victorious. As though you have made progress. They said, we won't give you anything. Gideon said, when I come back in peace. Notice, remember the first story of Gideon? He was hiding his food. Because he was afraid. But now he's on the road. He was tired, but he didn't quit. He was tired, but they didn't give up. And when he asked these men for food that they may receive strength, he did not allow their rejection to stop him. Are you listening? He didn't go rail for rail. He didn't get discouraged. You haven't received the victory yet. 
Gideon, and that's what Moses Gideon saying. Oh, I've got the victory. You don't see it, but it's here. You understand what I'm saying? When you overcome that inferiority, they may not see it, but the victory is here. And that's what you stand on. He just scratched his head and said, maybe you're right. He said, I'll be back. And he kept walking. Went to the next city. They said the same thing. Oh, like you've already overpowered these kings. Man, what makes you think you're going to win? And get in reply. When I come back in peace, after I've won the victory. Simple lesson. It's a simple lesson. How do you deal with rejection? Keep pushing. Yeah. Ah! Know what you know and keep pushing. Don't even sit down and give them the time to plant a seed. Keep pushing. Get in, keep walking. You keep talking, I'm going to keep walking. Because I know what I know. I know the change that is taking place in me. And I don't have to sit here and watch you tell me what I'm not, what I can't do. But I know what God has put in me. I'm going to keep walking. You can't do it. But while you said I can't do it, I'm going to walk in the direction to complete my test. Keep walking. Don't sit there by the road and cry. Already talking about me. No more. Keep walking. Jesus said, I sent you forth. He told his disciples that the city and town you go into, tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he said, if they reject you, if they don't receive it, he didn't say sit down there and wait for tomorrow. He didn't say sit down there and cry and try to please with them. He said, Lord, what should we do when we reject it? Wipe the dust off your feet and keep walking. You keep walking. You can sit Reject me all you want, to, but I'm gonna keep walking. Come on, I want my motion to hold you down. You didn't hear what I said? Keep walking. They still talking, Bishop. Let them talk. You keep walking because you know now. You don't feel the fear anymore. Gideon was confident that God delivered him, and when you become confident and feel that strength within. You stand on it. You keep walking. And you'll find out true is the scripture. The building or the stone that the builders rejected. All sometimes they become the head of the corner. You find out that you're stronger than your haters. You're stronger than your critics. You're stronger than the opposite. When you keep walking. Jesus was preaching, and he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And he had a lot of disciples. They didn't understand him. And they said, this man is crazy. They thought he literally meant to eat his flesh and drink his blood. But he was speaking about his death. And the Bible says that many of his disciples left him and never followed him again. This was the Christ preaching to a multitude, auditorium full. And when he made that one statement, they got up and walked out. Many of them never came back. I've often told you this. I'm going to tell you again. Can they all be wrong? Yes. Because they were all wrong. They walked away from the eternal God. You know, they say sometimes what you don't know can't hurt you, but sometimes I'm going to tell you what you don't know can. Listen. And they all walked away. And Jesus said, my word is a spirit of their life. They didn't understand. And they left him. And then he turned around and looked at his twelve. He said, will you go also? They said, you have the words of eternal life. Lord, but what are we going to do about all the people that left us? <laughs> Jesus said, be one. Leave them alone. They're rejecting them. Leave them alone. 
What do you do with people that reject you? What do you do with people that reject you? What do you do with the spirit of rejection? What do you do? You sit there and mope? What do you do? You keep on walking. Man, you walking right past the rejection. That's what I said. Rejection ain't got me. When I know what I am feel of virtue. I said, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing of the living God. The power of God is upon me. And God is talking to you. My God, walk past that rejection. Leave them alone. Don't even give it the time of day when you know that God has strengthened you. Don't even waste your tears. Don't even waste them. Because they're not wasting them on you. Once you receive the confidence, know that people will reject you. Everybody's not going to be happy for you. Everybody's not going to receive your change. Oh, but you know. How do you deal with rejection? Keep moving. Wipe the dust off your feet. And keep moving. Don't give it the time of day. You don't have to please the day, but I'm talking in righteousness. When you're right, you haven't done no wrong, but you're right. But even when you've done wrong, and you're trying to make it right, and people reject you, and you're still trying to make it right. Well, you make sure you try your best in your heart to make it right with God. If they still reject you, leave them alone. They got to have some God now. Because you made it right. I feel a virtue. No more crying, but I'm going to reject it. Wipe the dust off your feet. So was Christ. What did he do? He still went to Calvary, didn't he? Amen. They denied that he was the Christ. They buried him. Guess what? He still got up. Be because he knew who he was. Yes. Amen. So not all for the virtue. Yes. You don't have to sit around and listen to that. You don't have to give in to all that. They reject you, wipe the dust off your feet. Yes. Jesus said it. Wipe the dust Why? because they're wasting your time. Just do nothing but wasting your time. Wipe the dust off your feet and move on to the next city. Isn't that what it says? Read it, preacher. Let's close this. Now Zeba and Zabuna were in Karkor, and their host with them, about 15,000 men. All that were left of all the hosts of the children of the East. For there fell 120,000 men that drew sword. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in the tents of the east of Nova, and Jabal, and spoke the host, for the host was secure. And when Zeba and Zabuna fled, he pursued after them, and took the two kings of Midian, and Zeba and Zabuna, and discomfited all the hosts. And Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from the battle before the sun was up, and caught a young man of the men of Zuka, and inquired of him, and described unto him the princes of Zuka and the elders thereof, even three score and seventeen men. And when he came into the men of Sukkoth, he said, Behold, Zeba and Zabuna, with whom ye did upbraid thee, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zabuna now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto the men that are weary? And he took the elders of the city, and thorns of the wilderness, and briars, and with them he taught the men of Zuka. And he beat down the tower of Peniel, and slew the men of the city. Then said he unto Zuba and Zabuna, What manner of men were they who each stood at table? And they answered, As they are, so were they. Each one was of the children of the king. And he said, They were my brother, even the sons of my mother, and as the Lord liveth, if ye have saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said unto Jared, his firstborn, Jephthah, his firstborn, up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared because he was yet a youth. Then Zebah and Zabuna said, Rise thou and fall upon us, for as a man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Zebah and Zabuna, and took away the ornaments that were on their camel's necks. Now, <clears throat> what the men said that Gideon couldn't do, he did. 
And when he went and got his victory, he came back to those men and said, now, what were you saying? And he promised to put a whooping on them, and he did. Now, I ain't telling you to go back and put a whooping on nobody. <laughs> but the moral of the story is, as God delivers you and gives you strength, and you purpose in your heart to say to God, Lord, I'll do this for you. God, I'll do that for you. Lord, if you just help me, I'll do this. You understand? Amen. Lord, if you get me out of this, I won't go back. You, you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Lord, if you can just bless me, then I'll do this. And I'll do, remember what you said. Amen. And be sure you bring it to pass. You understand? Amen. Once you feel strong, once you feel delivered, once you have confidence, don't make that confidence your God. But remember where your strength comes from. See, the Bible talking about several people that once they become strong, they became exalted. They took that strength to be by their own merit, and they forgot God. King Uriah was one. He was a good king. But the Bible said when he became strong, he stepped out of the king's position and he tried to become as the high priest of the Levite. And only the Levites could deal with the tabernacle and the things of the ark. But the Bible says that when King Uriah's heart waxed strong and he felt strong, that he went into the tabernacle to do the priest's job and the priest withstood him. What are you doing? And then God smote him with leprosy. It's all right to be strong, but you got to use it in the right way. Amen. And once you, listen, when you're going through, oh, you're crying, oh, you're praying, oh, you need God. And once he brings you through, remember, you can still cry, you can still pray because you still need him. Don't get so caught up in your deliverance that you make the deliverance your God and not the God who delivers you. Amen. So once these messages give you strength, you don't look at somebody in the eye of for the big payback. No, but you thank God for that new walk and remember the declarations you made on your way up. Make sure you hold to your word. You understand? That's the point I'm trying to make. Gideon said he was going to do it and he did it. Now, as God is dealing with you, if you're praying, as you are praying to God, you are seeking directions from God. You need God to help you. God, if you can only do this, if you'll only do that, what type of declarations have we made? What have you told God, or what have you told God to this day and you have not kept it? Gideon kept his word. You keep your word. Once God brings you out, you keep your word. You be true to God. Gideon got the king. the wicked king, that he was to destroy them. And he told his oldest son, he told his son, are you listening? I'm going to close it. He told his son, take your sword out. This is just an extra bonus. And slay the king. Now he was an oldest son, but he was still young in heart. He couldn't do it. The boy could not just take that sword out. He wasn't mad. They weren't fighting. And then go slay that man. He couldn't do it. <clears throat> and the enemy said to Gideon, why don't you do it? For as a man is, so is his strength. As a man is, think about it, so is his strength. You're only as strong as you are. As a man is, so it's different. See, a lot of people got a lot of mouth. A lot of people will rise up, but when it comes time to make that blow, they can't. Also, it shows us. Now, was the boy very rebellious against his father? No. It gives you understanding in dealing with people. Sometimes people have a hard time doing the right thing. Not because they're necessarily rebellious. They know it's right, but they don't have the strength. It takes strength to do the right thing. And you may know what's right, but not always have the strength 
to apply it. But the longer you live and pray, that strength comes. The boy was young. He didn't have the heart to pour that soul. In other words, saints, some things come with maturity. Some things come as you grow. So maybe you know what's right, but you don't have the strength to open your mouth and say it. Don't let the devil beat you down with it. Just ask God to give you strength. As long as your heart still says, I know it's right. I feel a virtue. Ask God to give you the strength to make that stand. You see, other saints, you young brothers and sisters, you see all the saints, and you saints of God, you see saints walk in a certain way, and you're quick to say, I can do that. Maybe you can't do it. Some things take heart. Some things take maturity. Some things take inward strength. And some people that have been in the battle a long time make it look so easy. All because they are what do they call that son in, in the audible mechanic? Master mechanics. Now, master mechanic, am I right? He'll walk right in there and take that transmission down and down, boom, 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 ready for the next one. You see what I'm saying? Because he's skilled. Well, you have some skilled saints. And especially some of you younger folk, don't ever look at the older elders and then think you can make a judgment. Because many of them got more heart than you could ever have. And those of you who see saints that go through and they've been around, but they come forth shining like pure gold. Don't be so quick to judge. Because probably sometimes the, the simplest of trials they went through might have wiped you out. Because it looks easy, don't mean it is. Gideon told his older son, Slay him! The boy stood there. That's why it pays to have be around those who are strong in prayer. They can cover you. They can stand up with you when your weakness creeps in. Now, Gideon wasn't there. Maybe those men would have got that boy, took advantage of his fear. But the old man was there. And they said, Why don't you do it? For as a man is, So is the strength. And I'm going to leave you with this, men and women. I'm going to apply to that to men and women. As you are, so is your strength. Don't always go around talking about how strong you are. Why don't you try to live in it? I'll show you. Let the life you live show your inner strength. You don't have to boast on it, try to prove. Gideon, the boy can't do it, won't you do it? Gideon said, it's not a problem. I've been delivered. It's not a problem. I know what I know. I'm not going to second guess. I feel the virtue. Well, what is it that I should say, Lord? What is it? I feel a virtue. When I say I feel the virtue, you understand the Holy Ghost moving. And somebody can see what I'm saying, and then he's trying to put something on my mind. You know, when you say I'm so tired and afraid, that's not going to do you any good. I take you do what the last message told us. What's that? Fresh passion. You gotta, yeah, you're still afraid, but you're still moving forward. And as you move forward, you'll find out the further out you go, the further behind you put that fear. Nothing wrong with change when it's the right direction and the foundation is solid. Don't allow the hurts of the past and situations of life to, to discourage you from rising and going forward. Put it in your mind a negative thought. You're not worthy. You're not this. Nobody would ever this or that. No, 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 no. The Holy Ghost don't talk like that. Know your worth. How's that? Well, look what God has done. Look at all the things you have gone through, and yet you're still here. 
I feel a virtue. I feel a strong virtue. What I just said, what I just said, somebody that you haven't even had a conversation, or you recently said this, or you're thinking this because this presence is so strong. Don't let it. the errors in life, the flaws in life, the situations you've gone through in life is good or bad. Don't let them weigh you down. That today you're still alive. And by the grace of God, you can say, give me this day my daily bread. And I guarantee you, he's not going to bring from the past to feed you today. I feel the virtue. He's not going to reach from the past to feed you for today. So don't you. Don't you eat from the past. When the matter came down from heaven and God filled the children of Israel, he told them what? This is where that prayer came from. He said, pick up enough bread for what? Today. Today. If you take extra, who knew what happened in the morning? It's spoiled. Those who picked up bread for today, and they took extra, and they hid it. They thought they had something. And when they went hungry in the middle of the night to get it, it turned to worms. It was fall. So then we need to let yesterday be covered by the blood. Oh, Persian, make me new. When he feeds you for today, it's new bread. It's new now. And you can't be filled eating the food of today with your mind on yesterday. Let it go. Walk forward. Walk past rejection. How do you deal with rejection? Wipe it off and keep walking. Keep walking. You hear me, son? Keep walking. Because you're a new creature. You have made it in your mind that you're going to stand. You don't need to hear that. Keep walking. It ain't going to end right. Bitch, we're rejecting you. I'm like, fine. Where are you going? I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to wipe the dust off my feet. Why is that? Because I have confidence now that I am worth something. That I am somebody in Christ Jesus. I have overcome my fears. I, I passed through them. I fought my way through them and I became obedient to God's instructions. And he showed me my word. And I'm not going to let anybody change that. As a man is, so is his strength. As a woman is, so is her strength. Not a man is. I often use this illustration when I was in court. I was in a car accident and a man turned me over. They blamed me for that. I don't know why. But the policeman messed up the report. The man came in with a big cross on and a big old Bible in his hand. And as he was telling the story and they were reading, they had it all wrong. Cover up the car. What happened? Just lying. And I said, You're all of that. And she said, Shh. You know, be quiet while they lying on me. And she just smiled. She said, Shh. And while they were still talking, she said, There's no way. Talk on. <laughs> I walked down the freeway. He did. What am I trying to say? As a man is, so is his strength. He's doing all his mouth. Running your mouth about what you are, who you are, what you can do. Blah, 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 blah. And sometimes the Lord will tell those listening to you. Don't say nothing. Keep walking. Why, Lord? Because they ain't got no witnesses. You tell the truth. Let your fruit speak. When God is really doing something, 
You don't have to run your mouth all the time. You don't have to defend yourself all the time. You get the point? Once you receive that, uh, got rid of that low self-esteem and you know who you are. Those that come against you, reject you, try to put you down, you get to the point where you never look at them and smile. I learned that early age, you know what I tell folks now? I tell them, sorry, you should that right. And keep walking. Top full of virtue. Because now I know what I know. How do you deal with rejection once you got your strength and you're striving to be strong? Keep walking. Wipe the dust off your feet. Don't sit there and let it so keep walking. Trust you, God. And he'll bring you through. Let your strength be seen in the life you live. And believe me, you reap what you sow. God will not let you go unblessed or unrewarded. Because he sees and knows all. And then, once you obtain strength, they wanted to make Gideon king. He says, no. Don't allow people to exalt you above measure. Because you knew where you were and what you were before God brought you to that state. Don't forget it. David got up, brethren, and he looked at his home. Look at what I got. Man of the God of heart, he's a son, I got wives, I got talents, I'm a king. So he went to the prophet, he said, listen, prophet, I want to do something for God. The prophet said, you're a man of God, what do you want to do? I want to build God a house. Do it, David, do it. Prophet left. By the time the prophet got out, so I stopped him. Hey, prophet, turn around. Go back and tell David, he can't build me no house. I'm going to build him one. You know the young people say, beat this. Beat this. Prophet went back to, prop went back to David. That's not the prophet. Somebody said, you both be pretty, they prop. <laughs> Prophet went back to David and said, look at David. That's what the Lord said, wasn't that? He said, you forget that you were keeping the sheep and scooping up the dump, cleaning up mess behind the sheep. He said, David, they said, huh? He said, he pulled you from the dung hill, cleaning up mess behind the sheep, and put you as king of his people. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. He said, then how you going to build me a house? The heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. He says, I tell you what, what that? I'll build you a house. But just remember, how you gonna build God a house? Once you feel strong and once the blessings come in and you feel secure in your mind and your heart, don't forget you can't build God a house. Remember who it is that's building your home. And Gideon learned that. He said, I will not be your king. God is your king. And when you've done all you can do, he told his disciples to say what? We're doing our reasonable service. I pray that you encourage. Stay encouraged. You are worth something. Your life is precious. And don't let anybody tell you. You don't have to bow your head down. Give in to that spirit of oppression. Inferiority. You don't have to fear man, but trust God. And walk in victory. I feel the virtue. Walk in victory. Remember where your strength has come from. Push past your feet. Shake off the rejection and keep pushing. Little words of my mouth. Meditations of my heart. Peace.
precious God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that the word, I feel the virtue. I feel God touching somebody's heart right now. I feel the Lord touching somebody's heart right now. God bless you. It's all right. I feel him again. He's moving up on somebody's heart and body. God bless you. I feel the virtue. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let him minister to you. It's the real deal. This is the real Holy Spirit. The reason why God gave me virtue is that the Holy Ghost moved me. Because when, like right now, I feel the virtue again. And those of you that hear me, whenever I say I feel a virtue, God moving, somebody out here, you felt it. That lets you know. How does the preacher know? He's up here. That lets you know that God is in the house. The Bible says when they speak the words of your heart, then you know that I feel another virtue, that Christ is in the midst. God is actually here. That's his desire to destroy you. If you will let him. I feel a virtue. I know sometimes God we are afraid to let go when we have to put ourselves in the shell or we've had to as we thought build up our own shield of protection. And sometimes we're afraid to let that down. The word of the sheep of all those that put this front. Now what greater protection is that than the Holy Ghost? So we have to learn to trust you, Lord, and let go. Believe me. Let no man can pluck us out of your hand. We thank you, Lord.
God's word. I pray that the word of God has been heard. Pray to God that the spirit of peace be upon each and every one. Let the love of God go forth that covers the Holy Spirit. Let the spirit of God go forth with healing, physically and spiritually. And let peace be 